Good afternoon. Once again, I am the Honorable Lord Ian the Green, and we're going to work on more batard today. Uh, my chicken scratch up above, I told you, I've told everybody I have terrible handwriting. Here's some proof for you. Um, but handwriting and calligraphy are two different parts of the brain. One's a fine motor skill, that's handwriting. Calligraphy is more of that gross motor skill. Uh, and that's why I can do at least halfway decent calligraphy and have really terrible handwriting. We did not cover the letter H of all the letters last week. We kind of went A through M, kind of, and somehow I managed to skip the letter H, which is funny because the letter H and the letter N are actually very similar. So we're going to do H and then we're going to do the letter N. Um, if you'll remember, um, we have uh, between two and six X height. X height is four for this. You can do an X height of three. You can do an X height of five. That's fine. Um, this script has a lot of variety to it. I just work in four because it's easier for me. It's what I like. I think it looks prettier in that. Um, and your pen angle should be at 45 degrees. I should have had that drawn in for everybody already. So 45 degree pen angle. All right. So A centers are um, usually 100%, um, but you can do 50 if you want. Bring it back just a little, come up, down, and a little tick up for that. Um, and you get roughly, it's not straight. There we go. And then 45 degrees up. Wow, my ink bunched. 45 degree up, come down just a little, and that second half of the O. So to do that, and then this one, as a reminder, can either come out like that, which can be really pretty if you have a long line of them, but you can also just bring it down like that. They are both perfectly valid, but not at the same time. And so that's the H. The N is the I. Don't dot this one. And then the second part of that H is one way to do it. I like that way. Um, there are two other ways you can do this and also for the H. and actually just come out. And if you do it this way, finish below the baseline. And the H does the same thing. And then there's this uh, version that comes from France that I don't know that I dislike it, but I don't know that I like it. And it's kind of the reverse of this stroke, not quite. It's more like the first stroke of the O, but not quite. Um, and they usually don't have it that pointed. So I apologize for, for overdoing that one. It's usually far less pointed. Usually just ends kind of like that. This is a more cursive way of writing it. Um, I don't see this when the rest of the letters don't look cursive, when it looks more formal, this tends not to happen. Um, but it is a valid way of doing it. All right, so we've done O before. So we're gonna go down to P. Come up, just like you did before. Pull straight down, maybe allow about a half of a pen and I'm doing slight manipulation there. And so pull it straight down like you would for an eye. You get about two niblets down, twist that pen in a counterclockwise fashion or lift your pen uh, onto a corner as you pull. So, and you kind of get more of a, a better tail that way. 
I'm not still, I'm still not really good with this kind of a pen, um, but it works really, really well um, with uh, dip pens. Anyway, so there we go, much better. The P starts about here. You bring it up just slightly, and it's that second stroke of the uh, N again. And it's to there. Come in back, lift up, come down. So the other way to do that, and the way I prefer to do it in time, is I actually do this stroke and bring it up. And then this makes that makes it a lot easier to land inside of it and make that come down. Pierre, all I heard was, oh, I don't know who said that. I heard something about upside down. I don't know where that came from. And extend that so you can see the end of the paper. So that P again. That. And I think that gets you a better P. Huh. Those are looking like they're off. This is, you want this back line here to be 90 degrees to your baseline. And for whatever reason, they don't seem to be looking that way, but they are. All right, so Q is a fun letter that is kind of easy to get wrong. Um, and there's a lot of different ways of doing it as well. Um, the simplest is very Drogan-esque. In other words, if you're looking at what Drogan tells you to do, um, it's very similar to that. And essentially it's first half of the O, second half of the O but pull it all the way down as a descender. That's a very quick way of doing it. I don't have anything against it. I just don't think it's as pretty as it could be. So you have your O. And now you have a Q, and that one is off. Bring it back. Follow it. You can see that better. First half of the O, go ahead and make the second half. Pull it down, come up. And that's another cue or similar to another cue that I have seen. The R has uh, some fun to it. Uh, it starts off with an I. And there's two things, two ways you can do this. Up and make it a block like that. And then pick up your corner and make a kind of a small O shape there in the tail. And instead of just making a block, you can actually kind of make a swoopy curve and that points it a little bit more. And as you can see in the shine there, it pulls ink with it. But if I get the shine off of it, you can get the true picture of what that looks like. I like that point uh, better, but both of these are perfectly valid, but you still need to, at the end of this, pick up your corner, but I didn't do it quite enough, and drop it down. The thing is, is that how thin or how thick this should be, 
Um, I, I can't tell you that there's a rule on that. I haven't really found one. Um, that said, there might be one. I just, I don't know it. And what I will see sometimes with this thing here is that this will start off thin and it'll end thicker. Uh, so it's like if you push down on it, if you have a dip pen or a quill pen, um, as you're doing that and you put down on it, the tines will spread a little. And so that spreads the ink um, as well, you know. But this actually matters. Um, it helps you discern it from a T. Now, T is not that similar, but when you're going quick and you're reading, it could be similar enough that you could have some problems. So we'll go ahead and do the T next. Now, this is my way of doing the T, um, and it's based off of, of some gothic, some, some more precise gothics. Start above at a nib width, bring it down a nib width, and then pull straight across. And you can leave that. And then you put your pen back up here, pull straight down, just like an eye. Now, there are ones where you'll see the T that does that as well. At which point, why are we doing it on the T and the R? I don't know, but it's pretty. Um, I tend not to do this on the T. At least I think I do. So the T is kind of straightforward. I am leaning forward by like three degrees. That's annoying. Now you may have, you may, no, you probably can't see it in this. No, nope, probably not. So um, I can see it and I don't know if you can, but there is a tiny white dot right there. And it happens sometimes that, you're, that you miss and you need to fill that in. Don't worry about it. Just come over here, bring it down a little, you'll clear it up every time. Very easy mistake to make um, by just not, placing your pen quite correctly. Um, and you'll notice that sometimes you end up with this point uh, with these two and not so much of the point on that first one, but it's, you know, that's fine. It actually looks good. It works really, really well. So the U is an I. And then this tail goes out just a little bit more and another eye. And you can stop there and pull it like that if you want. If you don't like this and you think that that is unbalanced and there are people who like will scream and like, oh, I can't handle that because it doesn't balance these out and it doesn't, but it is a way to let you know that it's a U as opposed to two I's in a row. You can do that instead of bringing it down and over just as soon as you hit, go ahead and bring that diagonal down. You notice that this is a little bit curved. That was an accident, but that happens. And when you read period, when you see period manuscripts, you'll see that happen. V and W are my favorite letters in this script. Um, it's the second half, it's the second half of an uncial O, almost. And then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to bring it way far. I'm going to bring it out. And now I'm going to, I'm going to try and land right here. That's a little thinner than I like. That's a little thicker than I like. Um, so it's like, I, I prefer about a three quarter of a nib width. That's me. And that's the V. The W goes to the extreme the other way. And it has an A sender.
I find it important to have that little leg right there. Now, I like to start inside this, pull this down, and about half my pen hit is goes there, and then the other half creates the rest of that. Another tick. And now we're going to do that second half of the V again. That is a way to do it. Drogon has a slightly more complicated way. I like this. I'll show you Drogon's way in a second, but I'm going to redo this first. And I find this one to be more common than the way Drogon shows us to do it. Now, that's not Drogon is wrong. Drogon is absolutely right. I see the ones that, you know, I've seen what Drogon is, is, is pulling from, um, and he's right. I'm not going to tell you Drogon's wrong. I'm going to say, I don't think it's as pretty. So the start is very similar. And then you get something like that. I don't like it. Um, but go ahead. Taliesin, did you have something to say? No. OK, sorry, thought I heard you. Um, and so that works very well. Um, I think I pulled that a little too straight. So let me redo it. As always, do what works for you. But if you're going to be working off of a manuscript for your inspiration, do what they say to do or copy what they say, copy what they're doing. Let me look at Drogon, make sure I'm not totally screwing that up. Because it's been a while since I've looked at Drogon's version on this. What do you, uh, anyways, I was going to over it. Ah, uh, yeah, all right, I screwed it up a little bit. Um, right. So we're going to ignore those because Drogon's laughing at me. come up and it's more like that. Um, and the other way that he does it is actually um, less complicated, is even more complicated, I should say. Um, and what was happening is I was forgetting a stroke. And so you do this, and then there's that as well. They're all fine. I just, I like how this looks better. That doesn't make me right, doesn't make me wrong. It just, I have an aesthetic preference for. And we've already done X. If you remember, X is reverse the, the O um, really quick. That's the O. And that's roughly the X. So the Y is the first stroke is a V. And then you put a tail on it. Um, I've never seen it. Drogon says, go ahead and dot the Y. I've never seen that in a manuscript. Um, but I'm sure his exemplar has it. Drogon knows what he's doing. Um, so the Y and the V are very similar. The V stops here, the Y keeps going. And the Z is very angular. Uh, but it's similar to a lot of the Zs that we have seen. And that gets us through all the minuscules of this alphabet. We covered the other ones in the previous uh, class two weeks um, ago. Excuse me, I think we missed S. 
We yes. did miss we did miss the short S. Thank you very much. I should have been taking them off. All right, so short S. Um, your typical what I call the 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 spine of the S, um, and then it's down, swoop, and up, up, swoop, and down. And if you can do that and not make it look like it's starting to fall over forward, good luck. I'll be impressed. It is possible. Um, and this is, some people say, oh, that's a very German short S. Um, I've seen this French, Spanish, German, English. I've seen, um, depending, you know, I, I don't know if it depends on the scribe, but um, I will agree that you will see something more uh, like this more, more often in German, but you will see it everywhere. So does that S make sense? don't hear any no's. Yes, it makes sense. Thank you. All right. So I probably have about five to 10 minutes left. Um, do we have any questions or things people would like covered? We will do capitals in about two weeks. Uh, capitals are very artistic. And if you think that there's not a lot of required ways of doing letters wait till you get to capitals, they get even more artistic and with less rigidity. But does anybody have any questions about what we've covered or anything you want to see from last week or something you might have missed this week? A uh, quick question on the Z, the middle point of kind of the three, is that roughly between the, the baseline and the waistline or I guess I can't roughly, your guidelines. Roughly. Um, it's, that's where I put it. Um, and it really kind of depends. Um, I have seen it as low as two thirds or more like three quarters. Here's two thirds. That is half. Um, it never, I've never seen in Batard where it touches the baseline, but anywhere between half and three quarters is fine. The meeting will end in 10 minutes, I just got told. So we're at 10 minutes. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, it did. I just had to unmute myself to answer. No, that's OK. I appreciate the people are keeping themselves muted uh, when otherwise I do. Um, I know Drogan shows that kind of half R. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's the thing is that when you get to when this when you start using the script more and you start getting to where it becomes more and more cursive at a certain point. So the half R is kind of something that'll happen uh, anytime you want to use it where um, sticking in the Ace that that upright stroke for the R somehow just doesn't fit well. Um, you'll often see it next to an O. Um, sometimes next to an H, but not so much. Um, never next to an L. Um, and what happens with this R? is, and, and it's very similar to any of the Gothic half R's, so it's called a half R. Um, it's just that it's a little bit more angular or rounded. I don't really know how to say it. And now you have your R. Drogan's version. So it actually connects? Yeah, oh yeah, it's a ligature. So a ligature. Oh, okay, that uh, wasn't clear in Drogan. Right. Yeah. Um, anytime that you have um, where you have a uh, a stroke that connects one letter to another letter, it's called a ligature. 
So cursive is full of ligatures. It's it's that's the whole thing with with cursive. Um, and so Drogan's version, I think, is a bit more like that, and it looks very kind of Z-ish, but not the Batard Z. Um, I tend to bring it up a little. And so Drogan's version on this would look a bit more like that. And the thing is, is that you notice that this is a little bit more angled. It's not as thin as this one. You adapt to what you're next to. But I much prefer this quick and then make that kind of swoopy as opposed to make that much longer. Um, I'm sure if somebody wanted to do a deep dive study on this and figure out all the ligatures, uh, you could spend an entire lifetime on it. It would be pretty neat to see. Any other questions, comments, or things I might have missed? Uh, I guess also just between Drogon and what you were showing is the A's are different. Drogon does like a more gothic EA or kind of like the Carolinian A sort of. Yeah, I hate his A. Um, <laughs> That's legit. <laughs> um, but whether I like it or not is also kind of irrelevant. Um, let me see if I can do it been so long. All right, so what's he doing? Really? You want me to push? Yeah, I missed. Oh, okay, I see I didn't run. Let's see. That's how I would do this. Yeah, see why I hate his A? Or I can do this. Got it. Fewer steps. Yeah. It's not wrong. I just, yeah. Okay, and then just one last one on your the V that you have towards the top of the page, yeah. that line that goes through that was just measuring width, right? That's not a extra little cross. Yeah, no, that's just that's just trying to show. Yeah, that's not part of the letter. That's the V. Got it. Okay. And that is also an ugly A, but oh well. Yeah, Drogon's A is very, very complicated. And if you look at the top exemplar that he uses, he's making this, a. it's making this A, not this A. I didn't do a quick look at the second exemplar, um, but his first exemplar has this A. You think it's more of like just a time period versus scribe region variation or? Probably. Um, and that's the thing is, especially like we, uh, I don't know if you heard the discussion last week or not, um, but Taliesin and I were talking about how not only is Batard very regional, and you can look at a Batard and go, that's this region, you can sometimes get it down to and that came from this uh, particular place that this calligraphy shop, this, you know, monastery, whatever, it can be very, very, and to the point where like, Bastards apparently are more German and Bastarda is more French and English if I got, no, is more French. And then secretary apparently is more English, which is the first I heard. Did I get that right, Taliesin? Yes, Bastard is, is, is German, Bastard is French and secretary is English. Right. And <clears throat> they're essentially, so the script actually got started because of trade that occurred between France and England and how they interacted and they all kind of just started switching it over from being so very you know gothic texture texture or persisios or gothic you know 
the really precise ones that are very showy. And they're like, look, we need something we can write faster and it's not so rigid. And that, and this is kind of what they came up with. Uh, early 15th century to mid 15th century, depending on where you are. So, and then they got picked up elsewhere and their own regions got things, so yeah. Um, Ian, what, very quickly, what is your email address that you prefer to use? Ian the Green, zero yeah. one at gmail.com all caps or alternating in the green the same as it, it, the I email think. the email does not care if you capitalize it or not so it's in the green zero one at gmail.com okay yep uh, the zero one is important it is not oh one it is zero one that has gotten some people before Green and for anybody else, also, you're welcome to email me anytime you want to. Um, and I can always be reached on direct message on uh, Facebook. Uh, emails, I tend to respond to in a couple of days, although I used to be able to respond within 12 hours. Messenger, I tend to respond same day, but not always. I will get to you within 24 hours, though. Well, I wish we had more time and uh, it seems that Taliesin has volunteered. And so we'll get back to being able to use, uh, be able to do an hour or longer, but uh, we have less than a minute left. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the recording.